Mom has been telling me that there's a baby inside her tummy. I'm curious to know how the baby got there. This is a question asked often. Let's see what Aunt Melanie has to say to Peter. Welcome to the lesson on sexual reproduction in animals. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to Identify the different modes of reproduction in animals. Define sexual reproduction. List the male and female reproductive organs. Explain the process of fertilization. Distinguish between internal and external fertilization. Explain in vitro fertilization and explain how an embryo develops. You've been studying about reproduction in plants at school, haven't you? Yes, of course. Plants can reproduce in two modes, sexually and asexually. Well, animals can also reproduce by either sexual or asexual mode. For example, human beings and animals, such as tigers and horses, reproduce by sexual mode. Whereas simple organisms, such as amoeba and hydra, adopt asexual mode of reproduction. So babies are always born by sexual mode of reproduction? Right. Like plants, animals and human beings, also have reproductive organs. The reproductive organs in human beings produce gametes, eggs in a female and sperms in a male. Think of these eggs and sperms as supercells that are responsible for starting the reproduction process when they fuse. When an egg and a sperm fuse, another more powerful cell is created. This cell is known as a zygote. The zygote gradually gains power and develops into a baby. This type of reproduction that begins from the fusion of male and female gametes is called sexual reproduction. Which reproductive organs produce gametes? They are different for males and females. Let's look at male reproductive organs first. Male reproductive organs include a pair of testes that produce the sperm or the male gamete, two sperm ducts and a penis. The male gametes, called sperms, have a head, a middle piece and a tail. The sperms resemble a tadpole in their body structure. Each sperm is a single cell that contains all the cell components, such as cell membrane, cytoplasm and nucleus. And what about the females? Female reproductive organs consist of a pair of ovaries, two OV ducts, which are also called fallopian tubes, and the uterus. The ovary produces female gametes that are called ova or eggs. Each egg is a single cell, just like a sperm. One of the ovaries releases a mature egg into the oviduct every month. Oh, only one egg a month? Yes, one egg a month. But that's why there are millions of sperms. The presence of millions of sperms enhance the chances of fusing with the egg. The uterus supports the development of the baby. I have studied about pollination in plants. Is there something similar to that in reproduction in animals? Mm, let's recall what happens in plants. The male gamete, called pollen, enters and fuses with a female gamete called egg. Right? Right. In animals, when sperms come in contact with an egg, 
one of the sperms may fuse with the egg. To be more specific, the nuclei of the sperm and the egg fuse to form a single nucleus. This fusion is called fertilization and is the first step in the process of reproduction. Thus, in humans, fertilization involves the fusion of an egg cell from the mother and a sperm cell from the father to form a single nucleus called the zygote. The zygote, or the fertilized egg, is the beginning of a new individual. This individual inherits some characteristics from the egg and some from the sperm. That's why most children resemble their parents. Look at you. You look so like your dad. Ah, look. So many tadpoles. Yes, they're having a nice time jumping around in water. That's natural. It is the mating season for frogs, you know. During the mating season, frogs and toads move to water. When the female and the male frogs meet, the female lays eggs in shallow water. Interestingly, female frogs lay hundreds of eggs at a time. So many eggs! Yes, frogs need to lay a lot of eggs to keep their species alive. The eggs are exposed to moving water, wind, rainfall and other animals that may feed on the eggs. Only a few eggs get a chance to fertilize. The eggs stay together as they are held together by a layer of jelly. When the eggs are laid, the male frog deposits sperms over them. Sperms have long tails that help them swim in water. When the sperms come in contact with the eggs, fertilization takes place. Oh, but I thought fertilization took place in the reproductive organs inside the body. In human beings and a variety of other animals like cows and dogs, fertilization takes place inside the body. That's called internal fertilization. Aquatic animals like frogs, toads and starfish are a little different though. In such animals, male gametes and female gametes unite outside the body of the female. This type of fertilization is called external fertilization. The other day my biology teacher was talking about test tube babies. How can babies be made in test tubes? Didn't you tell me that they were made inside the female body? Not quite, Peter. Let me explain to you. Remember I told you that male and female gametes needed to fuse to form the zygote? Yes, I remember. Well, there might be instances where the two supercells or gametes do not fuse. Oh, what could be the reason? In some women, Ovi ducts may be blocked, possibly due to disease or injury. This prevents the sperm from meeting the egg for fertilization. So, the woman may not be able to conceive. So, how do test tube babies solve the problem? Well, actually, this problem is solved through a process called in vitro fertilization. In such cases, Doctors collect freshly released egg and sperms from the male and the female body and keep them together in a test tube for a few hours in the laboratory. Fertilization takes place in the test tube. The fertilization that takes place outside the human body is called IVF or in vitro fertilization. After fertilization, the zygote is allowed to develop for about a week and then placed in the mother's uterus. The entire development of the embryo takes place in the mother's uterus and the baby is born like any other baby. However, since the fertilization takes place in a test tube, such babies are popularly called test tube babies. IVF is an example of external fertilization 
that takes place in human beings. Wow! Here's another interesting thing. The term test tube babies is actually misleading. Test tubes refer to the tube-shaped containers of glass or plastic resin called test tubes, which are commonly used in chemistry labs and biology labs. However, in vitro fertilization is usually performed in a shallower container called a petri dish. Initially, IVF wasn't successful because a number of problems were encountered after placing the fertilized egg back into the woman's uterus. In vitro fertilization was successful for the first time on July 25th, 1978, when the first test tube baby, Louis Joy Brown, was born in Great Britain. How big is a zygote generally? It's a single cell, really. You know how small cells are? How does such a small single cell transform into a baby? You remember that the supercell, the zygote, marks the beginning of a new individual. The zygote divides repeatedly to form a ball of cells, which, in turn, develops into tissues and organs of the body. This developing structure is called an embryo. The embryo embeds itself in the uterine wall for further development of various parts of the body, such as head, hands, legs, eyes and ears. When the development of the embryo reaches a stage where all parts of the body can be identified, it is called a fetus. The child is born when the development of the fetus is complete. Oh, how long does that take? About nine months. How big is the baby inside mom's tummy now? The baby inside your mom's tummy is eight months old and is almost fully developed. You need to wait for only about a month to see the baby when your mom gives birth. Come, try and feel your mom's tummy. Congratulations! You have completed the lesson on sexual reproduction in animals. In this lesson, you have learned to identify the different modes of reproduction in animals, define sexual reproduction, list the male and female reproductive organs, explain the process of fertilization, distinguish between internal and external fertilization, explain in vitro fertilization, and Explain how an embryo develops. Hope you enjoyed this learning experience.